Welcome once again to Lato's Law. Here's Steve Lato. I had several people send me this story out of the Detroit Free Press, including Robert and Tiffany, both because they knew it was of great interest to me and people who watch my channel. Former Judge Teresa Brennan to be released from jail two weeks early. I told you about the bad Judge Teresa Brennan who went to jail because she did bad things. Judges shouldn't do bad things, but she was a bad judge. I was in front of her a few times, and I was always, 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 always appalled by the things she did and how she behaved on the bench. But um, uh, I had several people say, Steve, will she really serve her sentence? Will she really serve the entire sentence? And I had people saying, oh, she'll get off easy because she's a judge. Well, she's getting out two weeks early, but that's pretty much standard because they treated her like everyone else, which is pretty much all you can ask for. Uh, Kayla Doherty wrote the story for the Livingston Daily, uh, and the Freep picked it up. The Freep, of course, is the paper I delivered as a young man. Former Livingston County Judge Teresa Brennan will be released from jail Wednesday, ending her six-month jail sentence about two weeks early. Her original sentence end date was June 25th, according to the Livingston County Sheriff Michael Murphy. Brennan is 63 years old, was removed from the bench by the Michigan Supreme Court after a years-long Judicial Tenure Commission investigation and her guilty plea to a criminal charge brought by former Michigan Attorney General Bill Schuette. Murphy said we said right from the beginning we were going to treat her no differently than any other inmate. Brennan was able to earn credit for good behavior just like any other inmate, he said. You can earn good time by behaving yourself in jail or working in some way. We give a little extra time off to the inmates if they work inside the jail. If she were in our jail, that would include things like doing cleaning or laundry. Now, she was booked into the Livingston County Jail on January 24th. She's been sitting in jail since then, but not that jail. She was moved to another jail for safety reasons because, of course, there were people in Livingston County Jails put there by her, presumably. Murphy declined to say where she was moved, but public records indicate she may have been moved to the Washtenaw County Jail over Ann Arbor Way. Brennan was sentenced to six months of jail. 200 hours of community service, and 18 months of probation in January by Wayne County Circuit Court Judge Paul Cusick, who came in because uh, the local judges couldn't hear the case. Brennan could have faced up to 15 years in prison for what she was charged for, uh, including a perjury charge, but she agreed to do a guilty plea as a part of a deal with the Michigan Attorney General's Office. The sentencing agreement called for no more than six months in jail. And the sentencing itself is available on YouTube. And you can tell that she and her attorneys were thinking she was getting no jail time. And the judge chewed her out and said no. And he gave her the maximum of what he was allowed to give under that plea deal. Two other charges were dismissed as part of the plea deal. Those charges were misconduct in office and tampering with evidence. And again, she was a judge, a seated judge, and she was tampering with evidence. Attorney General Dana Nessel's office had Brennan lied about a cell phone that was considered a marital asset during hearings in her own divorce case. That she tampered with evidence by trying to remove material from the phone. That she committed misconduct by failing to recuse herself immediately from her own divorce case and then used that to de- delay to dispose of evidence. And basically what happened was her husband, who'd had enough of her, filed for divorce. But the problem is they lived in the county in which she sat as judge. And the case got randomly assigned it to her. And and when that happens, she's supposed to immediately have the case reassigned to somebody else. And she didn't do that. And the allegation is that she took that time period before the reassignment to to try to do some untoward things. Brennan's law license was also suspended following her plea. That suspension is still in place. She is also unable to hold elected office as part of a six-year suspension by the Michigan Supreme Court as part of the court's ruling when it removed Brennan from the bench last year. The opinion also stated that should Brennan be elected or appointed to a judicial office during the suspension, she is still debarred from exercising the power and prerogatives of office until at least the expiration of the suspension. So she really can't do much. She cannot run for office after the suspension ends due to a state law barring judges from seeking re-election after they turn 70. The state's highest court removed Brennan from the bench in June of 2019, saying she committed eight instances of misconduct, including not disclosing a close personal relationship with former Michigan State Police Detective Sean Furlong 
And with local attorney Sherry Polish, Furlong was the lead detective in the murders of Richard and Brenda Kowalski. Richard's brother, Jerome Kowalski, confessed to murders in an interview conducted by Furlong in the days following the murders. So Brennan oversaw the case and he denied defense motions to have Jerome Kowalski's confession thrown out and did not allow a false confession expert to testify. And meanwhile, didn't disclose that she was really good buddies with the state cop who was in charge of all of this. Jerome Kowalski was convicted on murder charges in 2013. His conviction was later overturned in light of the JTC allegations and the criminal charges against Brennan. His new trial is scheduled to take place later this year. And of course, everybody who is in front of that judge with that cop also probably gets a free pass and another shot at the, uh, another bite at the apple, as they say. Uh, in determining appropriate sanctions, we seek to restore and maintain the dignity and impartiality of the judiciary and to protect public, the Supreme Court opinion stated. So I can tell you, and I had people say, Steve, why didn't you do something about her? I was in front of her on a couple of very, very small matters. Uh, and by small matters, I mean lawsuits that settled. So I never tried a case in her courtroom. And the one or two occasions I was in her courtroom, I was just stunned by her horrible demeanor. She treated everybody with disrespect. She disrespected the attorneys. She disrespected the parties. She, I actually saw her out of the blue just yell at somebody in the gallery. Hey, what are you doing here? Who are you? What are you doing here? A woman was just sitting in the gallery. Um, contrary to anything anybody will tell you, courthouses are public spaces. And if you get bored one day, you can just walk into the courthouse, sit down in a courtroom and watch what's happening. Public proceedings. And the idea that a judge is going to yell at you and go, who are you? What are you doing here? Implies that you don't have a right to be there, that she has a right to know who you are, that she's that she has the right to know what you're doing there. And it's none of her darn business. And I remember at the time, she's berating me, she's berating my opponent, she's berating my client, she's berating everybody. And I had heard from other people that that's how she behaved. And when I saw her berating a member of the gallery, <laughs> wow, I'm surprised she just does this pause once in a while and go outside and just yell at passing cars. Um, but the problem is that if you were to read the transcripts, of what happened in the courtroom that day. It would simply say, the court, what are you doing here? Who are you? And it doesn't look horribly out of line. And, and, and people might look at that and go, strange, it's, it's, it's odd. But you know, if you asked her, she'd probably say, oh, the person was looking at me, like made a motion, like they wanted me to say, like, I don't know. And so the, that's what, what I saw was just the tip of the iceberg. And what other people endured and what wound up coming out about her was amazingly worse than what I, I mean, I just considered her a bad judge you want to go in front of. There's other judges I know of that I just avoid like the plague. But I had actually told people that I wouldn't take cases in that jurisdiction because there's a chance I'd wind up in front of her. And part of the problem is that, that she did not know the law very well, at least not the law that I practice. And what's funny is there was, there was a, a, a debate that took place on the record where I was discussing something with a judge and my opponent was discussing something with the judge. And the judge actually said, she, she, Teresa Brennan said, I'm going to go look at this back in my office. And she got up and she left. A few minutes later, her clerk came out and said, Mr. Leto, I've got a question for you. And I go, what's that? And she goes, you just cited a law. And I said, yeah. And I, I actually know which law it is. And she goes, can you give me the citation again? And I said, yeah. And I gave her the citation. And I go, why? And she goes, I heard you say it. I think you're right. But she's back there looking up other laws. And so anyways, a few minutes later, she went back and the judge came out. The judge actually finally agreed with me. <laughs> doesn't excuse what she did and how she behaved and how she treated people. And I've often said that one of the biggest problems that the legal system has is that the courts are not a welcoming place. Meaning that if you think about a courthouse, the average person gets the willies. They don't want to go there. And if they go there and they see this kind of stuff going on where the judge is adversarial with everyone, including people in the gallery, 
Uh, now, a courthouse should be the kind of place where if you go there and you get treated with respect and you, and you actually get what you're entitled to or what you deserve, then the courthouse wouldn't be that bad of a place. Now, don't get me wrong. There are certain places that if I say, hey, you're going to go to the hospital. I mean, no one gets warm and fuzzy thinking about going to the hospital, right? But courthouses shouldn't be that foreboding to the average person. And, 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 and people like Teresa Brennan, she was a big part of the problem. And judges like her are a big part of the problem. So Robert Tiffany, thanks for passing along. The free published it. And Kayla Doherty wrote it. Questions or comments, put them below. I'll talk to you later. Thank you for watching Leto's Law. If everything seems under control, you're just not going fast enough.